Ahoy! Would you like to get better loot and more legendaries? Well, you come to the right place. Because today we're talking about gear score and the high watermark system. Now I know there are some other videos about this topic out there, but unfortunately they either leave out some information or some older ones are just straight up incorrect in some regards. So I want to make sure that I have one video that covers all the information you need in this regard and that includes every possible question that you may have about this topic. Let's begin with the basics. What is gear score? Gear score determines the total value or quality of the gear that you loot, both for armor and weapons. This means if you have a higher gear score item, this will have higher armor, for example, in comparison, or will have higher additional attributes, like for example, constitution. So a lower gear score item would provide you maybe with 18 constitution and a higher gear score one with 20 constitution. In many ways, you can actually think of gear score as leveling up beyond 60, only that it's not your character level that increases further, but instead you are now leveling your watermark, which I'll explain a little bit later. But the gear that you eventually get is basically more of an equivalent to level maybe 65 gear or 70 gear. Gear score doesn't affect the number of perks on an item, that is determined by the item's rarity. So for example, a purple 500 gear score item would have a variety of different additional effects, usually effects that tie into the weapon, like for example Sundering Rend on a Warhammer. A green Warhammer of 600 gear score would not have these additional effects, but would provide you with more base stats, so for example more strength and constitution, as well as having higher base damage. In ideal scenario, you would obviously want to have both high gear score and high rarity for a lot of effects. But both of these things are influenced by different factors, and we're only going to look into one today. The other one is luck, which increases the rarity of the items. We'll do that another time. Today we're looking specifically at ways to increase your gear score, and for that we need to look at the high watermark. So what is this high watermark? It is the maximum value of a gear score that can currently drop for you. For a fresh level 60, that is 500 gear score. So initially, your high watermark for all items, once you hit 60, is exactly 500 gear score. Every single one of your armor slots, your jewelry slots, and weapon types has an individual high watermark. So for example, your watermark for shoes could be different from the one for chess pieces, and likewise your watermark for hatchets could be different from the one for hammers, for example. That brings us to the question of how you can increase your high watermark. And in order to do that, you have to get drops, which is typically done by farming high-level mobs. High-level mobs obviously have a chance to drop items. The items that will drop for you depend on your watermark. So if you just hit level 60 and you farm a few mobs, initially all the drops will still be 500 gear score. But then eventually you may be lucky and you may get a hammer with a 505 gear score. This hammer is now your new high watermark for hammers specifically. From this point on you have a higher chance of getting hammers with 505 gear score and you also have a chance to get a hammer with an even higher gear score than that. And it's rewarding to farm a lot because every time your gear score doesn't increase when you get drops, the chance of it increasing on the next drop gets higher. So it's almost inevitable that eventually you will have a higher gear score drop and your watermark will increase. A very effective way to increase it is therefore going to areas where you get a lot of drops. One of the things that was actually suggested by the dev specifically is farming named monsters in the world. Named monsters typically have a higher chance to drop loot and therefore will have a higher chance of increasing your watermark because you get loot more frequently. So generally it's recommended to farm high level named elite mobs, go into open world elite zones or farm higher level corruption poles even though those are currently bugged and don't really work in that regard. I'll talk a bit more about Elite Zones later in the video and give you some recommendations in that regard. Something very important that a lot of people get wrong is that you actually don't need to equip the item that drops for you. In fact, the devs have now confirmed that you don't even need to pick it up. Once a higher gear score item is dropped on the ground, your gear score is increased. That unfortunately also means that people could basically let someone else farm for them while they're AFK in order to increase their gear score. Not a fan of that part, but anyways, if you miss a drop somewhere that would increase your gear score, it will still increase your gear score even if you don't pick it up. That's the upside of that. So if an item has a better gear score but not ideal stats for you, you don't need to bother equipping it. I just want to emphasize this once again because a lot of people think you need to wear it. You don't. So how quickly does your watermark for your gear score increase? Well, the answer is that it varies a lot. 
Sometimes it will just increase by 2 points, by 3 points. At other times you will have massive jumps. Freedom, one of my company leaders who also helped me a little bit with this video, actually got a jump on a chess piece, I think it was, by more than 10 points at once. So if you get lucky, you can have massive boosts very, very quickly, and if you're not so lucky, it'll take a lot longer. But there's something here that can be a little bit confusing. Sometimes you can get higher tier drops than that. Sometimes you can get 580, 590 gear score drops, basically out of nowhere if you just hit level 60, for example. So why is that? Is your gear score now suddenly 580? Unfortunately not. There are certain named drops with a preset gear score. So these items will only drop with a specific gear score and they will always have that same gear score. As far as I was able to find out, those items don't affect your gear score at all. So if you have multiple 580 named drops, those will not suddenly raise your high watermark to 580. It'll still be at 500 if you just hit level 60. The same thing is also the case for quest items, faction items and crafted items. None of these actually affect your gear score when you equip them or when you get them because they are not counted as drops, which makes sense. They are not dropping from mobs. They will obviously give you a higher gear score showing in your inventory, but that is not your watermark. Your watermark isn't displayed anywhere because it depends on your weapons anyways. Also, when it comes to increasing your watermark, the level of the mobs that you kill actually plays a role as well. According to the devs, each mob has a drop cap depending on their level. So the higher the level is, the higher the gear score they will provide you with. So the highest level mobs will be the ones dropping 600 gear score scuff. However, it's worded a bit weirdly because they also say that if your kills are lower level, your odds of getting a roll up, a higher gear score, at to the very top are extremely low. This would imply that this cap is a soft cap and not a hard cap. So essentially, the higher the level of the mob, the higher the chance that they drop higher gear score and can increase your watermark. We currently don't have the full specifics on this, but based on this information, I would say it's advisable to farm level 61, 62, 63 mobs initially to just up your gear score a fair bit and then go for the very high level harder ones that take longer to kill as well because then you actually benefit more because you actually can push your gear score beyond the soft cap limits that you would otherwise reach. I know that even on level 62 mobs you can push your gear score quite far if you found them long enough. Once you reach a certain high water mark, the value of that can no longer decrease. But that doesn't mean that every drop you get of that type will always have the highest possible gear score. So if your high water mark for boots is 520, you can still get boots with 510 gear score. However, when your high water mark is higher, you will generally see more higher-ish gear score drops as well. I want to emphasize again that equipping gear will never increase your gear score. We had a very interesting way to test that through the content creator server where we were provided with gear score gear around 550 gear score that we could equip but the dungeons that we were running were only giving us 500 gear score because our watermark was just at the default of level 60 and therefore we couldn't get the high tier drops from the dungeons at that point yet. It is literally purely the drops, equipping plays no role. A question that I can't fully answer is if War, Invasion or Outpost Rush chests increase your gear score as well. It seems that the items you get from them are also just considered drops, so as far as I can tell they should be able to increase your gear score, but I can't 100% verify that. If you have tested that and you've gotten a new item with high gear score from them, please let me know. And on that note we need to talk about elite chests and elite farming zones. Typically what we see most at the moment are larger groups, larger companies, zerging the high-level open PvE areas, the high-level elite areas. This isn't necessarily the best way to increase your gear score, because obviously you have to get tags on every single mob to get drops from them, and when more players are around, you are less likely to get loot. However, all of these elite areas have elite chests, and elite chests can drop items for you as well. These chests are typically locked and you can only loot them once per day, and they give relatively good rewards, they also give certain items that you need to enter dungeons and so on. Multiple other members of my company have told me that they have actually gotten items from Elite Chest that increased their high watermark, that had higher gear score than anything they had looted before. And that's why you're seeing these Zergs, because it's much more efficient to just farm through the areas, quickly get the Elite Chests and go to the next one, and just get all the good loot that way. 
That is, however, not the only way. There are various named mobs that spawn around the world or can be spawned that also drop items very frequently and would also allow you to increase your gear score and sometimes, in my opinion, do that faster than by doing elite runs. However, a big disclaimer here. Don't farm the Siren's Brute. This is a mob in Reekwater that people have been farming, but it's actually bannable to farm this mob. That is because people are abusing a reset mechanic that you're not supposed to use and yeah, it's still in the game and for some reason a lot of streamers are apparently still using it, but it's specifically been stated on the forum that this is considered glitch abuse, this might get you banned, this might get your account timed out for a while, this might get your account reset to a certain degree, so just don't do it. Now, does Giesco affect anything else? Well, I talked earlier about how luck is typically the thing influencing the item rarity that you get, but there is actually a way in which gear score can affect that too. Certain drops, especially from dungeons slash expeditions, have an epic and a legendary version. For example, let's look at the Firebinder. This is from nwdb.info, and this is the legendary version of a fire staff that can drop in Gardens of Genesis. I've been in Garden of Genesis and I've gotten the Firebinder actually multiple times on multiple accounts and it was always epic, it was always purple. Why is that? Because the gear score of the item that I had was still too low to be the legendary version. I'm not sure which gear score you need to reach to actually unlock the legendary version, but basically this item will drop as a purple below a certain gear score and a legendary above a certain gear score. And this is the case for basically all dungeon loot. Thanks to nwdb.info for helping me with this specific part as well and confirming this for me. This is also the reason why a lot of people are farming a gear score before using their dungeon keys. Dungeons are an excellent way to increase your gear score because you get a lot of loot very quickly, but at the same time you would get better loot if you were running the dungeon later and you were saving your key for that because then your watermark would be higher. This is obviously a decision everyone has to make for themselves and not everyone is aiming to have 600 gear score in the foreseeable future anyways, but for those who are aiming to get high gear score and high tier legendaries as quick as possible, it may be advisable to save your dungeon keys until a little later. Now some people claim that your gear score influences your crafting. As far as I could find, that is not the case at all. Crafting gear score is completely independent from loot gear score or from the high watermark, as far as I can tell, and it's purely influenced by the materials you use and all the additional perks that you have, which is also why you can get high gear score crafting things while your watermark is much, much lower. Can you go above 600 gear score? Currently, not as far as I'm aware. There are some ways to hypothetically push your crafted items beyond 600 gear score, up to 620, I think, but those apparently don't actually work. It's apparently hard capped at 600 gear score. We haven't actually seen a lot of crafted stuff around that level that isn't named, so it's really, really hard to tell, but it seems that 600 is where it caps out. However, internally, you can technically equip items up to 700 gear score. This indicates that in the future, we'll likely see an increase to that. Now, is it better to have a high gear score item or a legendary item? I think that entirely depends on the stats of the legendary, the effects, how beneficial they are for you, and how much the gear score difference is. Sometimes you will just get higher damage, but you will lose out on certain perks, and that may or may not outweigh each other. So you have to make that decision depending on what you're after. When it comes to jewelry, that seems to be a lot harder to farm because it typically doesn't drop from mobs. So as far as I can tell, the most efficient way to get high tier jewelry is currently not to aim for a higher watermark, but rather either looking for specific named jewelry or having it crafted. But even crafting high tier jewelry is very, very hard. Once I find out more about that, I will let you know. So what if you just want high gear score items really, really fast? Check the trading post and do faction missions. You get a lot of good items from the faction missions that have higher than 500 gear score very quickly. You can get some from quests as well, obviously, but the trading post will often sell things that are significantly higher in gear score because people obviously keep farming them and just selling them on the market if they don't see any value in them. As far as I can tell, luck does not increase the chance to get higher gear score. However, luck seems to influence the quality and the tier of the drops that you're getting, so legendary purple, and that is something I want to talk about in the future, so if you're interested in that, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you get updated once we dig deeper into luck and how exactly it works in New World. That said, it most certainly doesn't hurt to have your luck gear on just to get better loots while farming up your gear score because you might just get something nice. I hope this answered every possible question that may exist about the topic. If there's anything I left out, please let me know in the comments and I will try my best to find the answer for you. 
And other than that, thank you very much for watching. Again, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell. And I hope to see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.